Hey everybody, welcome back to my channel. Sorry I took a break from this series. I wanted to get to the last video after I gave the other videos time because there's kind of a lot to unpack in this video. This could be a long video. Today's topic is the rise of online gaming. Um, online gaming, internet connected gaming, and multiplayer uh, LAN gaming all have their roots um, in computers in the 70s and 80s, and it's a complicated road to get to where we are today. So we got a lot to talk about uh, because it comes in a lot of different versions. And we're not just talking about multiplayer online modes. We're also talking about online stores, digital distribution. We're talking about, um, and you know, digital content distributed, you know, bonus content distributed through the internet, internet connectivity, LAN, net, local area network connectivity, stuff like that. It's all interconnected and it's gonna mostly be the two things, digital distribution and multiplayer, but there's a lot to talk about. So, I am not an encyclopedia and I am not the gaming historian. So, you wanna get a full, full detailed history, there's other channels to watch. I'll just tell you that right now. This is a retrospective based on my experiences with a little bit of what I know knowledge-wise just from what I've read or learned through watching other people's videos. So take all of this with a grain of salt, please. Uh, probably three or four grains of salt. You're, you're going to get very salty today. I'm going to get very salty today. Because online gaming has a way of pissing me off. And it's not all because of Call of Duty. Although that's a big part of it. Uh, I'm looking at you, Mario Kart. You can fuck off. Anyways... Uh, internet connected gaming uh, or distribution over the um, internet if you will started way back in the well for consoles is what we're talking about is console wars in the early 80s the first example of it was Atari if you're vaguely familiar familiar with Sega Channel a cartridge that you put in your Sega Genesis that you hook up your cable to and you get um, video games distributed over the internet, that's essentially what Atari 2600 had. It was a thing that plugged into the cartridge, that plugged into the unit, that let it get games distributed to it digitally over the internet. It was not as developed as Sega Channel. It did not last as long as Sega Channel. And it's one of those things that... There's not a lot of proof it even existed. It's just one of those things that... There are like magazine articles and you, YouTube videos that talk about it, but it's hard to prove that it really did exist. But it probably did, and so I'm going to mention it. Now, next we had in Japan, the Nintendo Entertainment System, known in Japan as the Famicom or Family Computer, also had a limited internet capability by way of the Famicom Disk System. I have only read that it could be connected to the internet. I do not know what it could do. I have no further information on it than that. So I don't know if it was digital distribution or if it was multiplayer or if it was something else. I, I don't know. Might have just been bug fixes and patches. I don't know. Super Nintendo had a similar thing. The, I don't know, BS satellite system or whatever it was called. And it's literally not BS like bullshit, but it's called, B, I don't know. It's a Japanese thing. Um, that was digital distribution and other stuff um, similar to the Sega channel but we'll talk about that again this was only in Japan so in the US we had the Atari thing and then nothing else until we get to Sega channel um, in the early 90s um, so now we're going to talk about Sega channel Sega channel which I already told you about was a cartridge that had a coax cable uh, hook up in the back that you would plug into your Genesis and it would let you hook up a cable to it and you had to have a, it was a subscription service you had to pay for it uh, separate from your cable program your regular TV cable TV so it was like expensive you know and you could download games from the digital store they were only available for I believe a limited time and once you turned the power off of your system they were gone so they were not downloads to any 
internal memory because the Genesis did not have internal memory. The Sega CD had external memory cards, which were basically flash carts uh, that plugged into the Genesis cartridge slot, but you could not plug those into the Genesis while the Sega channel was plugged in because it didn't have the lock-on technology that uh, Sonic and Knuckles had or the 32X. So it is what it is. Now, both the Super Nintendo and the Sega Genesis did have full-on multiplayer internet capabilities by way of a third-party um, peripheral known as the X-Band modem. Now, I am not a 100% sh sure on how the X-Band worked, but it's my understanding that it was similar to Sega Channel in that it was a cartridge with a cable, uh, an uh, uh, internet port that you could hook up a co uh, not a coax cable, but a Cat5 or a uh, uh, telephone line, something like that. It might have been dial-up. It might have been Cat5. I don't know. Ethernet. I don't know. But anyways, you connected to the internet, and there was a hub that you, you plugged your game in. Yeah, I think you had to have the physical cartridge, so I think it did have lock-on technology, but I'm not 100%, but that's what I believe it was. And then you would search for somebody else somewhere in the network that was playing that game, and then you would both play it at the same time. But I believe you both had to have the game. I'm, I'm not 100%, but I'm pretty sure. But don't quote me on that. Next, we have the Game Boy. Now, I do not know if Game Boy had any internet connectivity in Japan or not. But I do know, worldwide, it did have LAN connectivity, local area network connectivity. The Game Boy was a single-player machine that did have multiplayer games but you had to have what was known as the link cable now there were some link cables that had extra link ports on the cable that would allow you to daisy chain multiple game boys together for multiple multiplayer games most notably faceball 2000 which supported a astronomical number of multiplayers at the same time I don't know that number. It was like either 16, 32, or 64, but I'm not 100%, but it's a big fucking number for a Game Boy game. Anyways, there were a lot of LAN-capable games on the Game Boy, and also Game Boy Pocket, Game Boy Light, Game Boy Color. They continued this trend as well. Continuing on with consoles, the Sega Saturn had a network adapter that was released worldwide, I do not know if PlayStation had any, any internet connectivity. If it did, I would assume it was local to Japan. But don't quote me on this because I don't know. Because I do know the PlayStation did have an adapter that let you play video CDs in your PlayStation that was exclusive to Japan. So I do not live in Japan. I'm not from Japan. I don't know that much about Japan. So I can't tell you what did or didn't exist in Japan. Uh, because unless it was like something mentioned elsewhere, because I didn't like do research for this, because I usually don't, because I'm not a researcher. Well, I am. I am a journalist, but I don't always do research for these videos because it's stuff I've already just learned in the past, and I just want to talk about my memories, my personal memories with it, which I'm going to get to in a minute. So the Sega Saturn had some internet connectivity by way of an adapter that was sold separately and a handful of online capable games, again, that were just like multiplayer modes. You could play against other people that had the network adapter. I do not know if there were any internet or network capabilities on the N64, but I count it as a piece of online connectivity history just because it was the first mainstream, asterisk, home console that had four controller ports. I know, put your finger up, nerd, and go, um, excuse me, the Atari 5200 had four controller ports. Yes, for a very limited time, it never had any four-player games, and it didn't sell worth a shit, so nobody bought it, so it doesn't count. Mainstream was N64. Anyways, it had four player multiplayer built in and it introduced a lot of people to local multiplayer by way of split screen. Um, next on the console list 
is the Sega Dreamcast, the immediate follow-up to the Saturn and the last home console that Sega made that was, you know, comparable to the others. Uh, they still make consoles, but they're mostly retro clones uh, and minis. So they do still make consoles, but not like to compete with uh, the big boys. They're like in their own. They're, they're little league, but they're still making consoles. So it's inaccurate to say the Dreamcast was their last home console because it wasn't. But it was their last um, home console that was on par with the competition and that was intended to be competition. So let's let's be accurate because I don't want to get more nerds coming at me. And yes, I know that Sega does usually license their consoles to other manufacturers, but they have and still do occasionally manufacture their own consoles. But they also manufacture arcade machines and gambling machines to this day. So they're still a hardware manufacturer is what I'm getting at. Anyways, uh, the Dreamcast came with network capability built in. Now, do not quote me on this, but please feel free to correct me if I'm wrong. But I believe the base network adapter adapter was dial-up, and it had a uh, Ethernet uh, DSL adapter sold separately, I believe. But don't quote me on this. I'm not 100%. But it did have a lot more online games than any other console at the time. So the Dreamcast is where home console internet gaming really starts. Because from Dreamcast on, it became standard. For the most part. The GameCube is a pseudo anomaly. But we'll talk about it. Because it actually was internet enabled. It just wasn't utilized much. Anyways, um, and then we had PS2 and Xbox and GameCube. PS2 and GameCube had network adapters sold separately, but uh, GameCube, like the N64, also had four controller ports and it had split screen capabilities um, out the gate. PS2, it two controller ports, but you could get adapters, uh, multi taps to make multiplayer games. So they did exist on the system, but they weren't as common as GameCube or Xbox or Dreamcast. The Xbox, like the game, or the, excuse me, the Dreamcast, came with a network adapter built in. However, I am pretty sure, excuse me, pretty sure the Xbox had an Ethernet adapter built in. So you had to have a, an adapt, a separate adapter to uh, use dial-up internet, I believe. But I, again, I'm not 100% on that. I only had an Xbox for a brief period of about six or seven months, like five or six years ago. I didn't have much experience with it. I wasn't a fan of it, so I got rid of it quickly. I just sold it to a game store and then I got rid of it. I only bought it because I just wanted to try it out, just to see for myself, decide for myself with first-hand experience. I bought about 50, 60 games for it in that six or seven month period, played a lot of them, wasn't impressed, sold it, went back to PS2 and GameCube. But the Xbox was the first one in this whole discussion up to this point that had an online um, presence. What I mean by that is you actually created an online account and it had an online ecosystem, Xbox Live. Now, it was pretty limited on the original Xbox. I do not know if it was utilized for digital distribution or not, like DL would have been DLC or possibly downloads of maybe demos and stuff. I don't know. I'm not 100%. I know the Xbox 360 could, but we're getting ahead of ourselves. But it was capable of connecting people to multiplayer to, uh, uh, to multiplayer uh, games. And it was used heavily. Multiplayer was very big on the Xbox. The gamers who bought an Xbox bought it specifically for the online connectivity. That's what sold the Xbox. Because online connectivity on the PS2 was spotty at best because you had to buy an adapter and it didn't have a central network so not very many games supported it. A lot of games did but not as many as the Xbox. GameCube on the other hand, it's a footnote. Literally a footnote. But it's worth talking about because it did have the network adapter 
and it had a handful of network enabled games most of them were LAN capable there were like two or three at most that were internet connected like you could go online and play one of them I know of was fan well two of them Fantasy Star Online 2 and Fantasy Star Online 3 um, however those were not big hits and they did not sell a lot of adapters now there were two or three maybe four other games I'm not a hundred percent on this but there were a handful of games that did support local area network play so you could hook up multiple game cubes in the same space for a LAN party and share you know a you know have different TVs but all play multiplayer together I don't know how many games supported this I don't know how many players they supported I just know it was a feature on the GameCube but it was underutilized absolutely however the GameCube had another method of going about multiplayer connectivity um, which again is a footnote but worth mentioning and that was GameCube to Game Boy Advance connectivity which what that did was allowed four players who each had their own GBA to hook up to the GameCube controller port through the link cable, the GBA to GameCube link cable, and play multiplayer Game Boy Advance games or GameCube enabled uh, GameCube games with GBA connectivity. There were only a handful. Uh, four Swords Adventures was a big one, and Final Fantasy Crystal Legend of Zelda Four Swords Adventures, excuse me. And uh, there was also Pac-Man Versus, um, which was on the system. And there was Final Fantasy Crystal Chronicles. Damn good game, by the way. If you haven't played it, go fucking play it. If you've got like $3,000 to invest in that game, because that's what it'll take. Because you'll have to buy a GameCube and the game and four GBAs and four link cables and good luck. I'm exaggerating on the three thousand dollars. It's probably like six or seven hundred dollars, but it's not cheap because the game itself is expensive, and you gotta buy all that other shit to go with it. But it's worth it if you can do it and find four, three friends to play with. It is worth it. However, that's about it for GameCube. Now let's go back. Now internet connectivity existed on computers way before it ever developed on consoles. Even when they were experimenting with consoles, computers already had it down. Now, the earliest computer connectivity, the internet, um, was not really useful for gaming. You could connect to, not a server necessarily, th th this wasn't developed yet. But what you would do is connect to a bulletin board and download software from somebody's bulletin board, which acted like a server, essentially, so we'll just say, basically, it was a server that you could download a game from. But because this was mostly peer-to-peer, um, -peer, um, it was used mostly for pirating stuff. You could kind of play online, like text-based adventure games and turn-based adventure games, in that you would just use the bulletin board. You would each download the game and use the bulletin board to communicate your moves to, to the other player. Uh, this was complicated <coughs> and eventually <coughs> developed into the 90s into a thing that we called multi-user dungeons or MUDs, which were the precursors to MMOs, massively multiplayer online RPGs. Uh, the MUDs were precursors to MMOs, but we are, we're, we're getting there over time. This used a lot of chat rooms and BBS-like technology, so it was like complicated and convoluted, but we did what we had to do back in the day. And then we had, in the early 90s, we got our first glimpse of true network-enabled games, internet-capable games. Um, now, now, there may have been some in the past, but they they went mainstream in the 90s is what I'll say to cover my ass um, and it's mostly started with Doom and then Quake and then the, the successors to those games um, I believe Doom had initially a LAN mode 
and then later it got online capable an online connectivity added to it but I'm not a hundred percent it may have had online from the jump I don't know I wasn't playing doom when it came out I played it like a year or two after it came out I think it came out in 93 and I played it for the first time in 95 so two maybe a year or two like I said a year or two after it came out anyways but then quake was definitely land and online capable and then so was unreal tournament which was a big hit and then you eventually you got counter-strike and then Call of Duty, and then the rest is history, as they say. It just took off from there. Um, now, we have to talk a little bit about the types of games that were online at the time. Initially, your online games came in basically two formats. You had first-person shooters, and you had turn-based strategy games, or real-time strategy games. So you had games like the original Warcraft and Starcraft and stuff like that. Games similar to that. Later on, they would figure out, software developers and companies would figure out how to integrate network capabilities, online modes, etc. into pretty much every game that is, exists you know, today. But uh, slowly they would begin integrating it into other types of games, but it took a while to get there. So let's go back to console wars because this is console wars. We're not talking about computers, but we have to touch on computers to get to consoles because it was the Xbox that was basically trying to bring PC gaming to the living room, which is what its intended purpose was. Consoles before that point were bringing arcade games to the living room, and then home console games were based on arcade-style gameplay. So... That shifted with the PlayStation and N64, where we shifted to single-player story-based and multiplayer games, which would eventually lead to the uh, online gaming in the uh, PS2, Xbox era. The follow-up to those consoles would get internet capability built in right out the box. All three of them. The Nintendo Wii had an internet capability and it had a digital store and other digital distribution features such as the Wii channel, uh, the um, the Me channel, not the Wii channel, the Me channel. There was the um, there were a lot of channels that had internet um, integration on the Wii. Also, there was the PS3, which had a had a digital store. Um, and a digital network. You could sign into the network and play online games for the first time on PlayStation. And then the Xbox 360 also continued with Xbox Live and also ramped up digital distribution. It had a digital store. The Xbox 360, I believe, don't quote me on this, but I'm pretty sure I remember this, being the first home console um, to have digital distribution of television and movies as well as retro games. Now I know that the Wii would also have retro games uh, but it came out a year after the 360 so the 360 did it first and then the Wii did it but I, I'm you know anyways. The PS3 also did it but it only came out like two days before the Wii. The PS3 came out on Friday the Wii came out on that, that following Sunday that same weekend I bought mine on that, that Sunday. So they came out at the same time, just not the same exact day. Um, but by that Monday, you either had a PS3 or a Wii. You might have had a 360. Most people did. Um, but if you were buying one of those two, you bought you had it by that Monday, most likely. Or you were scouring Craigslist trying to get your hands on one. I was lucky to get my Wii on launch day. Wasn't inter interested in the PS3 at the time. Uh, all my friends had Xbox 360, so I didn't need to buy one. I could just go to their house and play. So I was golden there. Um, this is when online gaming turned into what we know it as today. It started in this generation and just kept going. Eventually, we would get stuff like Roblox and Minecraft, which more or less exist almost entirely uh, online. Uh, Roblox mostly uses it for digital distribution um, of new games and also online connectivity. 
Minecraft uses it for DLC, but it's free DLC. And it's always just like running in the background. You turn your game on, you turn your console on, and it just the DLC is just magically there ready to install. And then you, you install it, and a few minutes later, you're good to go. Uh, so they, they just stream you, basically, the... Um, connect the, the the dlc the the next evolution of online gaming i just mentioned the word streaming now i'm not going to get into the uh fuzzy history of how streaming video games came about because uh, i've already talked about uh the sega channel and the bs nintendo satellite system or whatever that's where streaming got its um early beginnings that's the infancy of what we call streaming um, now, PS4, Xbox One, and Nintendo Wii U... No, not the Wii U. The, the Wii U did not have streaming. But the Xbox One and the PS3... Or PS4, excuse me, did. What they offered was a digital service that allowed you to connect to their servers and play the game online without downloading it, without buying it. You just paid for a subscription service. This would eventually morph into what we have today which is PlayStation Plus on PlayStation 4 and 5, and um, Microsoft Game Pass, which exists on PC, Xbox One, and Xbox Series X and S. And uh, Microsoft is leaning heavily into streaming. Now, there were other attempts at streaming along the way. I know GameTap did it on uh, PCs. There may have been other attempts or, you know, early beginnings of it but it really came into its own into existence on the ps4 and xbox one now i do believe the switch also has some streaming and it also has an, a, an online store a nintendo switch online um which is mostly retro games i believe uh, I don't know enough about the Switch because once I sold my Switch, I walked away from Nintendo and I and I shut the door on them. So I don't follow Nintendo. I don't give a shit what they're doing anymore. Um, I lost all interest in Nintendo the day they announced Labo. I was like, Jesus Christ, I'm done. I'm done with this fucking company. They're too goddamn quirky. They're playing in the sandbox by themselves with like... Mega blocks when everyone else is playing with Legos, you know, on the playground. I don't know what the fuck Nintendo's doing. They're just off in their own little world, doing their own goddamn thing, and I'm over it. Anyways, that brings us to today. Now let's talk about my personal experiences with online gaming. This will wrap it up because I don't have a lot. Uh, I started with LAN play on the PC playing Quake. Um, and then I continued LAN play on the Xbox, we played Halo 2 at LAN parties. So this was my first, this was with local friends uh, in a local space. I did not play online capable games until the Nintendo DS, which I didn't even talk about. And then the Wii, and then the, a little bit on the Xbox 360, once on the Nintendo Switch, and then I swore it off never again. For the most part. So, Land Quake, fun as hell because I was playing with local friends. Land Play, uh, Halo 2, fun as hell because I was playing with local friends. Nintendo DS, I had two games that had internet connectivity. Uh, Mario Kart DS and Tetris DS. I played all of five minutes of Tetris online and I said, fuck this game. I'm playing the single player mode, never to play Tetris online again. Uh, fuck that. That was not a good experience. I played, I tried to, I tried hard to get into Mario Kart DS, pushing myself to the limits of my patience before I finally took the game to the game store, said, give me something else and traded it in for some, for a Sonic the Hedgehog game. I traded it in for Sonic Rush, which is a game most people don't even remember. And I was, I was over online at that time. Now, all my friends, as I previously mentioned, all had Xbox 360s, but we didn't get together to play um, LAN con connected like we did with the P uh, the Xbox. Instead, uh, we would all like, they would all have their Xboxes set up at their individual apartments or homes and connect 
online to each other, and so I would go to whichever house I was invited to, and we would all play against each other or against randos on the internet. I tried a few games at this time online. I tried playing Mortal Kombat 3 online on Xbox Live Arcade. That fucking experience sucked. I tried playing Call of Duty. I don't remember which one. Whichever one my friends had on the Xbox 360, I tried that online. That was a miserable fucking experience. I swore that off. I tried playing online um, Halo 3. That was a miserable fucking experience. So I was like, you know what? I'm not sold on this. So I did not buy a 360. I was not sold on the 360. I got my 360 the same summer, 2017, that I got my original Xbox. And I had already gotten rid of it by 2018. I, I, I picked up about 60 or so games on the Xbox and about 60 to 70 games on the Xbox 360 in a very short time span because I had really I had a really good job and I made really good money at the time. I was a news reporter and I was making really good money uh, compared to what I'd previously made. And I had a very cheap apartment. So I like just jumped in head first. Didn't really find anything enjoyable on the 360 that I didn't already have elsewhere PC, PS3 uh, Wii, Wii U or whatever. I was just like, you know what there's nothing, there's no reason, why am I buying games on the, I could just get this game for less money over here or a better version of the game over here or a game I already have over it. So I was just like, I, I was over it and I sold it off and I, and I washed my hands of it. I did dabble in Switch and Wii U online I try on the Wii U. I tried Splatoon online, and I tried Super Mario Maker online. Mario Maker was okay because it was just download somebody else's level and play it. I was good with that feature of online connectivity. Same thing with Little Big Planet um, on PS3. I was okay with that. That is, to me, what I want from an online game. Give me content somebody else made, and then let me play it. Download and play it. Or give me DLC like they do on, on Minecraft. To me, that's online. I'm good with that. I tried Splatoon multiplayer. Uh, was not good at it. Swore it off. I tried um, ARMS multiplayer on the Switch. I was good at ARMS. That was the one online experience I had that was in my favor. I was winning matches left and right. And I was having fun. Because I was actually good at ARMS. So I could play that game and do well. I tried Mario Kart 8 Deluxe Edition on the Switch Online and threw the cartridge against the wall. Uh, it didn't break, fortunately, but I did sell it to the game store and I got rid of it and replaced it with something else and I don't remember what it was. I just got rid of it. I was like, fuck this game. It was just like Mario Kart DS all over again. Gave me anxiety. Now, backtracking one final time before I give my final thoughts, I didn't mention the GBA had a local area network wireless adapter, which is kind of online almost. It's like a precursor to Wi-Fi. So if you had a GBA, you could plug the wireless adapter into your, car, into your system and play games locally with your friends locally over wireless connectivity. Um, which was kind of like online, but it was more like LAN without a cable. This carried over to the DS. It also, and I think the 3DS also supported wireless LAN capabilities. And I don't know if the Switch does or did or does or not. I don't know. Um, I think it does, but I'm not 100%. I think the Switch relies on online, but it might have wireless LAN capabilities, but I don't know. If it does, kudos to Nintendo. If it doesn't, oh well, I guess. That's them being Nintendo. So, I know the GBA did. I know the DS did. I don't know if the 3DS or Switch did or do. I don't know. But, anyways, that leads us to final thoughts. So, online connectivity as a form of communication, in-game communication, I'm good with. You know, in-game chat with your friends. If you're, like, playing... Minecraft or, or or World of Warcraft or whatever, which I didn't really talk about MMOs, but I'm gonna I'm gonna save that for another video. That's a whole nother topic. Um, so that'll be a whole separate thing. But that's not a console wars video because that's not console. 
Not really. Uh, I'll mention MMOs, console MMOs in that video, but that's going to be a whole separate video focused exclusively on MMOs. Anyways, getting back to final thoughts. I like how Minecraft does it in games like that. Like, I turn my system on and it's like, hey, guess what? There's an update. And then you go to your, your update page and you click on it and you wait for it to install and then you go reload the game and then you're good to go. And you got new fun features. That is good for me. Like I said, online chat, in-game chat, I'm good with, you know, playing a game. Like, I'm playing, I don't know, Mario Paint on my Wii U or switch or whatever i'm just using that as an example and my friend is is playing i don't know fucking monster hunter whatever and we can just chat with each other you know in between game sessions or whatever uh the ds had an online chat i'm pretty sure the the other consoles had online chat i know i'm pretty sure the 3ds did i don't know if the i don't remember if the switch did or not I know the Wii U had its its thing and the Wii had its thing, but the Wii the Wii and the Wii U were complicated. I didn't like how the Wii did online chat because <clears throat> it was like a message board. It was basically email, more or less. I didn't like that. It wasn't real time. Uh, but anyways, um, it was okay, but it was just like whatever. Online multiplayer, co-op multiplayer, I'm down for. You know, like uh, Gears of War. Me and a friend connecting over the internet, playing the game together. I'm down for that. Multiplayer competitive against strangers? Never again. Ever, ever, ever. LAN or multiplayer competitive against friends? Yes. I'll, I'll, you know, yeah, I'll placate my friends if they, if, if, you know, the stars align and we can make it work. I'll do that. So that's my experience with online gaming um now i didn't talk about mobile gaming because i've already done a video on it and it's basically like fucking candy crush and that's like I, I fucking fuck off with mobile gaming don't come at me with this game which is just a fucking fucking uh, whatever card fucking game or a fucking city building game where you have to like buy tokens to what don't those games don't fucking matter when people think on I've already done this video I've already done that video fuck off don't talk to me about mobile gaming it sucks I know mobile games have internet connectivity but it's fucking rubbish and I hate it I hate mobile games so that's like fucking ads in your face that's the uh, digital distribution I'm not a fan of you gotta stop the game and watch a fucking YouTube video before you can... No, fuck off with that. That's mobile gaming. Fuck off with that. That's online on mobile. I don't talk about it because it's even fuck off with that. Uh, so that's it. That's that's my... Um, you know, that's all I have to say about online gaming. Uh, stay cool.